Okay, I'll be honest. I am tired of starting every episode with Welcome to episode so-and-so of the Silver Savage. So, I'm just gonna wing it. Because that's what I feel like doing today. Um, anyways, uh, this past week has been kind of interesting to everybody from Chinese espionage balloons to uh, trains being derailed and poisonous gases all over the place. Really got some people to thinking about are they truly prepared to the eventuality of a disaster happening next to them, near them, in their hometown and so forth. What can they do to be better prepared? What should they consider? What should they think about? So in this episode, I decided to sit down with Steve and chat about that. What are we doing? What are some things that you should be thinking about? And how can we be better prepared to those disasters, from natural disasters to man-made, so we are not caught off guard when that day comes? Steven. BK, here we are together again. <laughs> take, take two. Take, take two. <laughs> uh, for, for our listeners and viewers, uh, we, we tried recording, but our, our colleagues, because now that we have a new makeshift studio, well, we're, I think we're fixing a lot of our issues, right? We, yes. we fixed the Wi-Fi last time. Now we both have headphones and microphones. So hopefully the audio is better. Uh, we're still working on getting a true studio. But in the meantime, we're sharing our office. This is our actual office. This is the back of, of my desk. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and our colleagues outside the window are <laughs> showing obscene gestures. Yes, being but shenanigans. Shenanigans. Um, I do want to point out that uh, we asked Allison who works with us to uh, go get us some whiskey because we ran out of we're in the office after all. Um, and she got us uh, my favorite, Maker's 46. So if you ever want to buy me a present, it's in the Maker's Mark 46 specifically. I'm Just, not as bougie. Just give me a $20 bottle of Larceny and I'm good. Yeah, well... Maker's Mark's 46. Uh, <laughs> anywho, so a lot's been going on this week, and uh, we, we decided maybe we should touch on some of it. So everything from Chinese balloons yeah. to trains derailing in Ohio, and apparently that's uh, the, the plume yes. is affecting our neighboring states. Yes. Uh, we have talked about domestic terrorism, international terrorism. We have talked about cyber breaches, the FAA coming again and saying, listen, we cannot guaranteed that the issue we had last month was it uh it's not going to repeat itself with the computers going down right. so there's a lot of shit going on there is and i think you know how they say ignorance is bliss right i think a lot of people don't realize and can't put the dots together right um we can sit here and speculate all day conspiracy theories uh, but at the end of the day there's always some validity to rumors and you know yeah. skepticism and stuff like that yeah so you know being that at least for me, I, I don't know all the information about everything. I don't mm -hmm. think all the information has come out yet. That Chinese balloon that they are picking up the remnants out, out of the ocean right. and uh, and the additional flying objects, uh, you know, so many speculations out there. And, and, you know, and they intercepted Russian jets over Alaska. Yeah. So and, and I think and that's drones too, yeah, right? Th this one thing, and, and this is to our viewers. If you want to see just how vulnerable we can be against countries like Alaska, go to Google Maps. Countries right? like Alaska? I mean, sorry. States, countries like Russia <laughs> that are close. I mean, Alaska would think of itself as like its own country sometimes. Technically, it is. <laughs> uh, but that are close to Alaska. And if you look at, just put in Little Diomede and Big Diomede. Big Diomede is Russian. Little Diomede is American. It's a small island and there is a colony there. Um but it's a mile distance apart. Yep. And, and if you if you zoom in on Google Maps, you can see Russian military equipment on that island, you know. Interesting. So it's it, they're right there. You yeah, know people I mean? think when you open an atlas, right? So if you look at it as a flat, the US is all the way on the left and Russia is all the way on the right. And it looks like we have a vast, no. you know, glow between Just us. Go over the top. But but it's a circle. <laughs> and you think about it, we're next door to them. Yeah, you're Literally right over are. the top. You know, it, I think it's faster to get into Russian you know, territory than it is to fly to Hawaii because you're just going over the top of the yep. globe rather than across. Yeah. Depends it. what part of the U.S., yeah. obviously. But yeah, 100%. So <laughs> people don't understand a lot of it. Now, again, a lot of it is, like I said, there's a lot of connecting the dots and there's a lot of people out there right now putting briefs mm -hmm. and warning. They are putting the dots. And, and one statement that I saw one individual put is, I don't know that it means anything. But you can't just ignore no. all the signs. I mean, they're there. And it may be nothing. It may be something. Don't be stupid. Right. Pay attention. A lot of people don't. So without going into the, I guess, the politics of it or making speculations about what all these things are, it did raise another question that uh, 
you know, you and I were talking about the other day, actually. Uh, what are we doing to be prepared as individuals? Right. And, and again, the le- the idea of being prepared is subjective, right? Yeah. You know, like you have people that might build bunkers and, you know, have five year supply of food, whatnot. There's different levels. I, I don't. I'm right. going to eat my neighbors. But, you know, if you're Steven's <laughs> neighbor, be warned. <laughs> they know which ones are in the in circle. So yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, so, you know, I always say at least have three days of food enough to get somewhere. Yep. Right. And then you link up. You know, we have our plans of linking up and going somewhere. Uh, but also you have to take in your environment. What are you? What's close to you? You know, what's near you? Because you can be prepared for some event that never happens, but then you have something that happens locally and you're not ready for it, despite all the stuff that you yep. have. And, and people think it has to be some huge thing. I mean, think about COVID, you know, three years ago, people, it wasn't terrorism, or at least, you know, it's <laughs> not, not speculating right now, right? But people got freaked out. They got caught without anything. Like, if you don't have toilet paper to carry you through a week, you have bigger issues. Yeah. That's all that's true. So some basic essentials. Yep. Uh, my wife came to me, you know, about a year ago, because every time I would go to like BJ's or Costco's, I, I'd buy more toilet paper. She goes, why are you buying so many, so much toilet paper? I said, have you learned nothing for 2020? <laughs> so the reality is that basic preparedness, like right. you said, it's funny. It's not funny. It's interesting. You mentioned uh, your environment, right? I was thinking about it the other day. I live now in an a peninsula. Right, I live uh, closer to the water. There's arguably one road in, one road out. I think there's more than one, but it's very limited, and there's smaller roads, one lane each direction. And I'm thinking, if there's a catastrophe, and it doesn't have to be something big, a natural disaster, right? Let's say a, a, a storm with water overflowing everything, right, and people get stranded. What's my easiest way to get out? And honestly, for me, I mean, you're gonna eat your neighbors. I'm gonna commandeer a boat mm-hmm. from someone on a pier and. My easiest way to get out now is actually via water. Right. Uh, so we're gonna have to link out somewhere that's by yeah. water. <laughs> and again, like for me, it's it's difficult because you know I'm closer to a major metropolitan area. Right. I'm right by an airport. I'm right by a railway. So you're gonna commandeer an airplane. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I like it. I, I was thinking more of one of those air crash fire rescue trucks because they're big and they'll plow through anything. Oh yeah. So uh, definitely one of those because that's what the Terminator used, I think, in one of the movies. Uh, I think it was three or four. Not the one that wasn't so good. Anyway, <laughs> um, but it's like for me, um, one of the things I look at um, too is I have um, CSX railways, literally a stone's throw away, and I see these cars going over these tracks right over um, 695. You know, and for um, um, at my time at Capitol Police, I was a hazmat technician, so I learned about the symbols and this and that. And every time I drive under and I see those cars, I'll tell my wife, I'm like, those are chlorine tanks, and sounds harmless right because we put chlorine in pools it's a chemical we use it's a poison yeah but what if you if you've ever seen what chlorine can do and this has happened in the u.s before in the past um you can look it up there was a chlorine spill chlorine gas and chlorine gas most people think oh my god you know um it's gonna dissipate but it doesn't it's a heavy gas it actually stays about a foot to three feet off the ground and it'll move like fog rust metal on contact and like you said it's poison you breathe it in, you're dead. But most people wouldn't know, shit, chlorine gas bill get high. You know what I mean? Right. You know, so little things like that. Know your environment. You know, symbols, like hazard symbols and stuff like that. That's all. And there's apps. Information. As, a, as a medic, right, um, when, when you're taking um, the basic EMT class and so forth, there's actually a whole block about understanding those symbols. And there's nobody remembers all of them because no. there's so many, uh, except for you. You remember all of them. But there's an app that uh, you can download. It's a free app. So if you look it up, uh, my phone is being used at the moment, so I can't share it. Uh, I'll put it in the video so you guys can uh, take a look at it. Uh, but just download it so you have the resource if you need to. Uh, and you bring another another point. So what are some skills that you think somebody should learn or know um, for general survival purposes, right? And then we're not talking World War Three right now. We're talking... You stranded at home for a week, two weeks, you know, help is not coming because right. they can't. We did a whole seminar about it, yep. about uh, no one is coming, right? And we we talked about it. But what are some of the skills that you think? Um, I think, to be honest, um, basic gardening. Yeah. Um, basic gardening is definitely one of them. Homesteading. Yeah, homesteading, I guess, is the proper term, right? Uh, but even if you live in an urban environment like myself, me and two of my neighbors are deciding to do a co-op garden. 
all right, that we all can openly take from and use. And we all have skills that we're contributing to it. You know, I'm the guy who's going to build the beds. You know, uh, the one neighbor is going to do the gardening. The other neighbor is just a freeloader and he's going to take. But he's the guy who's going to help us kill zombies when they come. That's uh, important. <laughs> no, he's a plumber, but he knows how to work pipe, do irrigation and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so base, your basic necessities, right? You got to have a way to contain and clean water because you need water, um, food, right? And a depending on weather, a heat source, right? right. Which is going to be the biggest problem because there's, especially where I'm at, trees don't just grow back overnight, right? And that's going to be a, a source that everyone's going to be going after. Yeah. Um, I would say if you're, if you're at home, you probably can use just layers, just a bunch of blankets and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So so there's ways around that, but you, you're correct. What's the saying? I can go without air for three minutes, without water for three days, without food for three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's generalizing, obviously, but that shows you a little bit of the hierarchy a lot of right. things of things right um another element that i think would be important is what, what i consider oftentimes to be trench medicine right i think mm -hmm. hygiene is going to be a big issue yes if you don't have running water and sanitation you know wh wh where where you take a dump mm -hmm. right so people don't think about it but do you have plans for that i mean a chemical bathroom type thing uh um a bucket with with sawdust in it and something to yeah. contain yep. germs and yeah, exactly and that's the big thing because obviously excrement bleach you're, you're gonna attract you know vectors right, right. Uh, uh, disease vectors um flies and maggots and all that stuff and those are all vectors for disease next you know you have a whole nother problem you know and food and everything else is the last yeah. of your worries yeah if you have no electricity how do you keep food refrigerated in a mm -hmm. sense or perishable specifically right do you have enough non-perishables in case you need to uh to feed yourself for a few days and and even perishable food that's typically in the fridge what are alternate ways of keeping it cool right it's funny you i keep saying it's funny a lot and i, I don't know it's my i i guess it's like people saying like every yes, other word i'd rather you For, say it's funny it's funny like. yeah i don't like like yeah like, like, i don't like like like, like. Yeah, well, yes um <laughs> but you came with me to masada to the and prehistoric not prehistoric <laughs> that's cool yeah, it's for, full of dinosaurs <laughs> full of dinosaurs um uh, no, but we're talking 2,000 years ago, people yeah. were living without electricity, and the way they built their village, yeah. so to speak, on top of that mountain, overseeing the Dead Sea, in the middle of the desert, they had rooms that were uh, essentially caves to keep them cooler, and they were used to hold perishables, right? Yeah, so, and, and they had cisterns that held water. Yeah. It was like, went in one, it was amazing. Right, so that we're talking about people 2,000 years ago that had the solutions, and how through modern living... We, we lost that skill set. Yeah, as uh, I know, I keep seeing the memes on it. You know, it's like 2,000 years ago, someone without a degree built something that has lasted to this day. Then come the people with the degrees and it falls apart in a year. Right, so, 100%. Because uh, we've lost those skills. Right, so, so again, so those skills. So you talk about plumbing, basic plumbing, either from mm -hmm. irrigation or just to make sure that you can keep water moving, um, having some basic medical skills. We, in, in that seminar, right, we talk about uh, people that are medications. So obviously, if you're on any sort of medication that your life depends on, you should probably start stockpiling some of it right. every so often, put one more aside. So if and when the day comes, you you have enough to sustain you for a little bit. Um, people ask us about antibiotics. And, and I think there's a little bit of a crackdown going down on that now. But for, but for a while, you could get around it by getting what's called fish antibiotics yeah. or aquarium antibiotics essentially the same exact thing just because it's marketed for aquariums there's mm -hmm. no prescription needed right there's a different name but same active ingredient yeah. um but start thinking those those manners and have those contingency plans mm -hmm. uh you talked about a rally point right without giving our secrets because i don't want everybody and their <laughs> sister and brother joining us no offense people no, but, that's food oh you got a point <laughs> uh, but you know, people should have a plan. Uh, you, you you may not be able to stay where you're at. Where do you go? Right. Where do you go with? Are they, there is certainly strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. And when you pick your group, you got to pick people that are an asset and not a liability. Right. Right. So, you know, our group has medics in it, has people that can work farms, have people that can build stuff. Um, the idea is we, we can sustain ourselves collectively right. better than we would be able on our own correct right. and, and is again if that were to happen you know you're taking civility out of the picture right we're all civilized we drink lattes we play on our phones you know we use butt wipes um when all that ends that 
survival instinct kicks in, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Mm -hmm. And we're it's gonna, we're going to find those like minded individuals. We're going to find our tribe, and we're going to get into that survival tribe mentality. And people need to realize that. That's I think that's one of the first things in my mind is that civil unrest that's going to happen because yep. people are going to start to panic, and then you're going to have to survive that. And you see that all over with yeah. riots coming oh, yeah. up and so forth. And that's I think that's. Honestly, the the real that's going to be the first thing you're going to have to survive and get through is that civil unrest because people are going to get desperate. You know, if something like that were to happen, once you survive that, right? You know, the stronger survive, then it's a whole nother um, ball game, right? Because just like we talk about how we're going to have our tribe of people who are trying to do good, survive, and help other people. Obviously, you're going to have the opposite too, right? The, the ones that are nefarious and have nefarious intentions that want to take away from those people. You know, it's just like the movies. You know, we, we see in Hollywood movies, portrays that all the time. But the fact of the matter is, that's pretty much how it's going to be. Yeah, human nature. I mean, what was the book? Lord of the Flies, mm -hmm. right? You put a bunch of kids on an island, and whether you want to or not, there's going to be power is something that everybody craves. Right. It's it's an innate emotion. That's when people talk to me about gun control, for example. They're like, if we take guns away from everybody, there's going to be no crime. Like, bullshit. It's going to be a bunch of victims because there's always going to be the one person that's going to crave that power. You can't take that away from humanity. It's just It's ingrained in us. It's right. a survivalist right. Right, uh, instinct. And you, you're you going to start seeing this internal fraction. So that's another thing to consider. If you building your team, are those boundaries set in advance that so people know who's their the role and... right and listen leader doesn't have to be in the sense of a dictatorship right, right? but we're talking about you have to you have to know your role and you have to know when to step back and let other people Correct. use their strength and not necessarily assert your opinion because under that extreme stress that is not going to be people don't understand i mean we've seen it in combat mm -hmm. right but under extreme stress people f fall down to their lowest common denominator as a human being right. and they may be your best friend and look 100 percent in control when we chit chatting now having a glass of bourbon but you're putting under that stress and the beast in them comes out mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they don't recognize who's their friend who's their brother right. their survival instinct kicks in and that may override what they right. thinking so when you build your team you need to be aware of that and pre-plan for that. Right. right. And, you know, we've talked leadership and stuff like that before, but not to get into a whole nother topic, but that is what leadership is, right? Mm -hmm. You don't, you're not taking on the burden yourself. You're relying on the individual from the lowest to the highest to contribute to the thought and the decision that's going to happen. Right. Because right. that's what makes a team, you know, it's not just one person doing everything, but like you said, everyone has to understand that ahead of time because there's always that power crave. And especially in a situation like that, where regardless of what it is, and just using myself as an example, right? I'm looking out for my kids, my wife. And if I don't like what you're saying, that's where that division might come in. So if that collective, collectively understanding, like, okay, let's trust in these decisions and it won't, you hopefully won't have that conflict. But again, depending on the situation, you yeah. just never know. I think that conflict is going to happen anyways. And again, I know we're deviating from the original point of topic, but that's how these things work. What a surprise. Right. But uh, I think those conflicts are still going to happen. I think. What's important to establish in advance is I know I'm going to get overridden. I know my ego is going to get hurt. I know that what I think is most important being my kids and my wife and my family is not going to take top priority in relation to the better good of the whole tribe, right? right. Um, I just need to suck it up. And as long as my family is not hurt by the decision, uh, I need to learn to live with it and deal with it and move on. Yeah. No. So, so we've gotten to the disasters. Let's talk about, let's pinpoint a disaster, right? Right. We had the train derailments. Yep. Right. And uh, there's one had chemical spills. There's a plume of smoke, right? That's mm -hmm. going around uh, infecting respiratory um, systems of animals and people. Um, and that happened last night, right? This is yeah, there's a second. I think there's mm -hmm. a second incident. So there's two, I think, train incidents. Oh, really? Yes. I heard of the one in Ohio, and I just saw it on the news this morning. Was, uh, yeah. Okay. And that happens more often than not. But right. so let's say we live in a town where a train runs through it or we're close to freight, you know, CXS, Pacific railways, whatever it may be. What can I do as an individual, you know, to just be aware, right. you know? So, so first of all, listen to the news is important. How many people here also have emergency radios? Uh, yeah. Right. Um, one that's connected to the national weather, yep. um, Noah. you know, Noah, um, and, and be able to, to get those notifications when, Listen, I don't think it's far-fetched also assume that censorship is going to take over some of our media. I mm -hmm. mean, we see it in social media all the time now, but I think just even 
regular TV stations. We, we're becoming more and more like China and Iran, oh, yeah. where it's dictated what we can and cannot see. And, yep. and like you said, I, I don't hear about some of this stuff. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I assume most of our listeners who aren't keeping their thumb on the pulse type thing are also not aware of some of these things happening. So they need to actively and purposely seek that information. Correct. 100%. Um, and it's open source. It's out there. Yep. You know, just got to know where to look for it. Exactly. Um, I can tell you right now, uh, Code of Federal Regulations, the CFR manual, CFR 49. I had to memorize that thing inside and out when I was a hazmat tech in the military and uh, as a law enforcement officer. But it's all open source. It's there. You know, um, if you live in a place where, you know, you're close to a chemical plant or a freight, some kind of freight, just learn those basic symbols. And not just that know how to respond to those chemicals, right? Because like I said, you know, chlorine gas doesn't dissipate. It's going to be low, you know, or what if it's some kind of caustic liquid, you know, um, how do you neutralize it if you had to, right? right. Uh, but the biggest thing is getting away from it, right? Exactly. And uh, I always like to to joke uh, when we were in law enforcement, you use a powdered donut, all right, to understand a hazmat scene, right? If you can see the whole scene through the hole of the donut, you're far enough away, all right? <laughs> <laughs> if I love it, if if the dust of the donut blows away from you, then you're downwind. And then you put the donut on the floor. If it rolls away from you, you're uphill. So you're safe. So always have a powdered donut with you. I love it. I love it. So uh, shout out to Duncan. Just I'm a big fan. Yeah, Krispy Kreme kind of guy. Are you? I don't need donuts. I'm more for the coffee. So that's why I go with Duncan. Yeah, I'm not a big donut guy either. Yeah. That's a that's a fallacy that even though I'm not a cop anymore, that cops I, love donuts. I don't know. Well, obviously, Duncan only give you free coffee. So when you're working shift over midnight or whatnot. It's... I never got free coffee from Duncan. Really? Yeah, 7-Eleven took care of us. 7-Eleven does take care of you. But you walk into a Duncan, they'll, they'll give you free coffee. I'm sure they will. It's, yeah. it's you know, each one is different. Yeah. So Starbucks will not. No, no, yep. no, no, no. They'll ask you to leave yep. if you're in uniform. Sorry. Uh, or they'll speed in your drink. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of Starbucks lovers out there. I apologize. I don't apologize, actually, because honestly, I don't like generalizing and I don't like, we don't mention companies, names, no. stuff like that. But that is one that is so frequently but out we, there. We're as, speaking from experience, right? Yeah. Empirically. This is not a, a hit on them intentionally. This is stuff that has happened. <laughs> right. Yep. So, uh, no, I like Duncan's coffee. Um, I'm not a big donut fan, but I'm going to start ordering donuts with powder just to for a hazmat situation. <laughs> I mean, it is going to be part of my uh, survival tool right now. Uh, I, I, but all joking aside, too, like things like air meters, you can buy that. That's not regulated. You can buy an air meter, test air quality, you know. And if you live in a place like that, buy a plant that has some kind of exhaust, you should have an air meter with you, yep. you know, and just test the air real quick. Um, little things like that, you know, they're they're readily available on the open market. So you're bringing another uh, great topic, actually, and something to consider because a disaster plan is individual, right? As I said, for me now living closer to the water, my my escape route is going to be different than your escape route. Yeah, right? yeah, and yeah. you and you can fish. You you have yeah. a means of getting. I, I can't build a bunker though because I'm on the water, so I can't go subterranean. You know, you can buy a submarine. Oh, I love the way you think, man. Yeah. That's why I love you. You know, you know those like those those like half submersibles that the Colombian drug smugglers use. I mean, I'm pretty sure they get auctioned off once they're like, you know, captured. Yeah. We have contacts in the Coast Guard. We should call one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but no, it should be individual. So, as you said, if you live by a chemical plant, a nuclear facility, or whatever, you need to know, okay, this is a threat for me. This is what I need. For the majority of the population, I say you live by, you know, a train track, mm -hmm. right, a, rail, a railroad, and you, God forbid, there's another one of those train derailments. You need to, all you need to know, and like you said, is just get as far away as you can. Yep. Don't worry about air quality. Don't worry yep. about anything else. Wait for the authorities to do their thing, yep. right? And you just get as far away as you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Now, this is where people don't have a plan B. Like when we say get far enough away, it's like, yeah, I can go to the Holiday Inn, you know, a few right. miles up the road and stay there for a but few days. Then what? Exactly. So, do you have a plan? Do you have a place to go? I mean, we have a place to go. Uh, and it was very strategically designed. And we actually have a couple places. Yeah, to go, I was going to say we got depending a on options. what it is and depending. We, we where would it be is. welcome in many groups. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I, I would argue most of our listeners. Well, knowing that some of our listeners are from our like, lichen, like, lichen. That's a werewolf. 
and a little plant that spreads across your lawn. That's very like, annoying. Are you more into lichens or vampires? It depends what movie we're talking about. Underworld. Underworld and a little bit of both. Yeah. So I mean, they really put that. They made it made it hard to decide because yes. they have the vampire falling in love for the yeah. world. Yeah. It was hard. So and he, hey, squirrel. Yep. You did it again. <laughs> what are you about? Let me have a sip here. <laughs> but no. So back back to the preparedness, the plan Bs. Um, I just and here's the thing, right? So if if you have some basic preparedness, like even like I said, you know, air meters, whatever it is. A lot of times you can anticipate it and respond to it before it gets bad, yeah. right? Read the signs. You know, like you said, too many people have their face in devices. They're not situationally aware of what's going on. And when I say situationally aware, I don't just mean what's in front of your face. You know, um, it's one of the things I like to um, stay attuned to global policy, right? What's going on around the world? Because that grossly affects us here in the United States as well. You know, whether it's economics, um, violence, whatever it is, right? It, it, it's kind of a chain reaction, right? It's a butterfly effect. Um, and then I start looking at what's happening here in the United States and start reading into that. And then like, okay, what do I do if that's why I start playing the what if game, right? So, and then sometimes I'll come on to you, hey, BK, what if this happens? What if this happens, you know? And we should be playing the what if game, you know, like- I've That's learned. how this whole thing started. I mean, this past week, you were, we were talking about it. Yeah. Like, what if, you know, and we're talking about getting zombies. Yes. <laughs> and we always say zombies, but uh, jokingly. Um, or not. I mean, define a zombie. Uh, I can't. I, we, we're not getting political here. <laughs> no, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I mean, the reality is zombies are around us. I, I think so. And, and, and the reality is, right, a, a zombie is a mindless creature bent on one objective of spreading its virus or you whatever know, that virus it, yeah, may be yeah. right exactly um, so but that's the person trying to survive right but but that's what people don't understand because people always wait for that big one yeah right i'm like there's so many mini disasters around us all the time and are you resilient enough to handle that yep and to protect yourself and your loved ones yeah right? and i can't you know what it's funny you say that because oh that i remember now um I think it was in yeah 2009, 2009 right? We had the big snowfall, uh, snowmageddon. Yep. Um, I actually used some of my supplies during that because I couldn't get out of the house, you know, until I was able to trek it to the store to get some goods. But I ended up using stuff, you know, and I was really happy. I was like, yay, I finally get to use this. You know, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So, uh, so like you said, it doesn't have to be this massive disaster, right? right? And it gave me the opportunity which is something many people don't do either to replenish, right? Cause the stuff was getting older anyway. So I'm glad I used it and I got new stuff. So and now it's been sitting there for 14 years. No, I mean, I replen. damn, I, I guess it's time to replenish. It again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's, uh, you know, we always like leaving our, our listeners with some practical, tangible, yeah. you know, solutions. Um, what are some items that you would say everybody should have in their house as a bare minimum for, you know, let's say three, four days. I I would say anything longer than that, and we have bigger issues. And so, that's just, so again, this goes back to okay, you get some signs, right? There's always going to be some sign. It's mm -hmm. not going to just be all of a sudden, unless you know we go to World War Three or something like that, right? And an EMP goes over some crazy, and then we're gonna turn into the Wolverines and Wolverines. Um, but I keep four collapsible um five gallon jugs right and they they're very soft malleable they collapse down but i have filled them up before you know because of whatever some a For people don't have that filling out a tub would yeah be the same uh, thing. and anything that can hold water, water. Yeah. yeah you know i filled it up just to anticipate the water being shut off or being mm -hmm. contaminated um so that's a source to hold water yep. right and then your next idea is to clean water as well um there's many you know um homesteading methods to do that but there's plenty of stuff readily available on the market bleach. yep that you can you know maintain yeah i believe one drop of bleach for every 100 milliliters mm -hmm. um would kill most contaminants in it and you still find digesting right. or ingesting and and the one other thing I'll say, and I'll let you contribute as well, is food, obviously, right? There's plenty of products. I'm not pushing anyone in particular. I bought from, I believe it's uh, For Patriot. Um, yep. Uh, yep. So I bought their product. I They're like pre-planned. Yep. Um, I've got, I think, three months worth. Okay. I do plan on getting some more. They're great products. I've tasted them. 
And all considered inexpensive. Inexpensive, yes. Yep. Um, but one of the things we do too, kind of like what you do when you go shopping and buy toilet paper, um, I'll buy an extra can of tuna, you know, yep. and this and that. And I stock by the tuna, the peanut butter, the proteins and stuff like that. Because that's another thing, right? Nutrition, right? Deficiencies and stuff like that. Um, you got to get that vitamin C or you're going to get scurvy, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So little things we will stock. Yeah, people don't think about their nutrition. I, it's a... Uh... I was about to say it's funny, but I'm going to change it. It's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> uh, I had the, the honor, um, an opportunity to go with my daughter to the Holocaust Museum last mm -hmm. week. And, um, you know, walking around the exhibits and, and seeing the conditions in which people live. A lot of them obviously died in the concentration camps from the, um, the gas chambers and so forth. But so many more died from malnourishment, mm -hmm. lacking certain vitamins that then lend itself to the development of certain diseases and, right. and ailments that ended up killing them, right? So like typhus and stuff like that. So again, that's where hygiene comes in, making sure you have a well-balanced supplementation in a sense. So just keeping a multivitamin around, honestly, right. uh, would go a long way. Yep. Um, I agree with you. I, I buy coffee. I, I store coffee also mm -hmm. uh, for two reasons. One of them, for the safety of everybody around me, if I don't have coffee, it's going to be bad. <laughs> Uh, but I don't want to, I sincerely feel that's going to be a currency. Yeah. Bullets and coffee. <laughs> yep. And toilet so, paper. And toilet paper. Um, and you say, uh, you said bullet, right? I, I certainly stock on ammunition. Um, just because I moved to belief. I don't know if it's a right or wrong, but I want to believe that I don't have to have everything. I need to know who does. Correct. <laughs> and I've, I've made the same assumption. I've, I've had friends that buy, you know, they buy small sl slivers of silver or gold, I'm like, why do you bother with that? I said, someone like me is going to come up, kill you, take your silver, melt it down, and make bullets with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's going to be worthless. Thing. Yeah. What are you going to buy with it? it yeah, right. It's going to be a it barter. It loses its value. Yeah. When you talk about a situation like that, it's bartering, right? What do you have that I need? What do I have that yeah. you need? And nobody needs a block of gold. No. A block of gold, which is such a... I was about to say retarded, but I'm not allowed to use that word anymore. No. no. So, factardo. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it is such a random, I guess, measurement unit for economy that is, right. it's been, I've been, I think it's been debunked since. I mean, yeah, someone decided that gold is valuable. Yeah. And, and I don't think we use gold anymore. Dollar. Right. But, anyways, regardless, I'm like, gold has no value to me as a block. Right. You can't eat it, you know, you can't drink exactly. it. Exactly. So, in, the heat of the moment, what am I looking for? I'm looking for food, mm -hmm. I'm looking for water, I'm looking for means to defend myself if I need to, but that's what I'm going to go after. So, you know, you stocking on silver and gold, and I'm saying that I do know where it comes from, though, because going back to the Holocaust and World War II, people were able to buy their way out of Europe, you know, having those resources. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Jewish people I know, um, because banks were close to them, right. they, weren't, they weren't able to reach their or access their uh, saving accounts and, and money um, having gems or or gold or silver that's tangible that they can actually use to buy their way out right. made sense but from a survival standpoint right. and that's what i was going to say different different situation right because yeah. you have a war where somebody's going to win and they're still going to be an economy right right this is different everything's collapsed yep <laughs> and and even if temporarily, right? Yep. But the idea is that I'm not buying my way out of my home into a boat. I'm taking that boat, right? Because yep. that's the resource I need. And, and and you talk about force, right? Obviously, the weapons come into play. Um, and there's this misconception that it always has to be a firearm, too. You know, I purposely train myself on a bow, you know, so I have a bow. I can keep using that arrow. You know, at some point, you know, bullet manufacturing is going to stop, you know, and this and that, if it were that bad. Or you know, it won't be accessible to you. Or it won't be accessible, correct. So, you know, have other means to defend yourself. You know, bows, arrows, knives, whatever it may be. You Clubs, know. axes. Yes. Flamethrowers. You need gas for that. That's true. But Fizz, how many of our listeners actually practice self-defense? Like true self-defense. You know, the, the reality is, as we said, somebody's going to come after your resources. Mm -hmm. Just as much as you talk about going after their resources, they're going to come after yours. <laughs> Do you have the know-how or how to defend yourself and protect that stuff, right? Um, is it well secured? You know, we're not talking about having a camera system around your house. That's not going to stop anybody in no. that case. You know, do you have the ability to actually stop them? Um, so I guess what our listeners should live with today is the 
understanding of this shit is happening. It's happening all around us on a daily basis. You should certainly pay attention to what's going on. Yep. Education, 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 education. Yep. That's going to be the first line of defense. Yep. And as you said, being proactive, being aware, um, prepared in in a sense. So if I see something going a certain direction, I know, okay, I need to start feeling at some buff tabs or some collapsible jerry cans type thing. Yep. Um, and then have that contingency plan. Okay, if I shelter in place or if I need to go somewhere, how do I get there? How do, what do I take with me? Um, I'll be honest, I kind of pin myself. I'm, I'm going to be honest with our listeners in the sense that I have a lot of resources at my house. But if I need to go somewhere else, my resources are significantly diminished. So what I started doing recently is actually try spreading some of those resources through some of those locations right. that we identify. Just in case I have to make my way there, I don't have to drag it all with me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that's how, again, not to sound pessimistic or doomsday kind of <laughs> like, but it's just being realistic nowadays. I think, yeah. you know, Preppers got a bad reputation until COVID happened and all of a sudden all this right. would be Preppers like, yeah, you're on toilet paper, aren't you? Yeah. yeah no, I'm good. <laughs> and, and And again, it's, I think people need to understand that the line between civility and chaos is extremely so thin. thin. So thin. I mean, you talk about everything is digitally connected now from our, you know, gas, electric, you name it. You know, uh, you look at what happened with the FAA, right? Yep. I mean, it, one little switch, you know, one little EMP, anything will shut everything down. They did in New York had a blackout for like three days. Yeah. Nobody still knows what that is. Yeah. It's a terrorism. Not, it doesn't matter. You had mm -hmm. a blackout for three days. No electricity in and, New and York. And a heat wave, you know, and people died. Yeah. You know, like, so, again, ignorance is bliss, right? Everyone thinks, oh, it's not going to happen to me. What's it's the name of the movie with uh, Will Smith when he's the last man on in New York, oh, in Manhattan? Um, he has yeah, his yeah. dog. That's the zombie one. Yeah, it's a good movie. <sighs> Damn it, it's stuck in my head now. It's a good one. It is a good one. And that's a viral one, too. Yeah, I'm not a huge Will Smith fan, but I, I will say that was a good movie. And and argue, I, I would say it's a realistic. I mean, you take the blackout condition with combined that with covid yeah you know and you have that movie yeah i mean and there's so not to put our viewers watching movies movie after movie but the scenarios are out there whether it's a chemical disaster whether it's a viral disaster an invasion from yeah North korea yeah, wolverines um or russia i guess the original. Actually, i just watched the new one with my daughter it's not bad no, I still like the original. The original is better, it, but this one thing—it's not bad. It did a good job on it. The action yeah. is certainly better. Um, you know, it's another. It's funny. I, I made my sister watch it. Oh, I can't remember. Outbreak. Um, oh yes, that with Cuba Gooding with, Jr. Is that with the Ebola? Yes. Yes. You know, like I thought. And that's that was... thing. We had an Ebola outbreak not yep. to, not that long ago, and yep. we had to come to America. Yeah. What? Are but people ready? Those scenarios were pretty realistic yeah. and, and the response and what happened and you know what how the people got you know chaotic and desperate um, that was realistic you know um, and again it could be something small it could be something big but that line of civility is so thin so thin and i think people need to start waking up and realizing that that this whole it ain't gonna happen to me guess what it happened to somebody already that's why we're talking about it yep you know so yeah, no, 100%. So I, I would leave our listeners with this. If you need resources, reach out to us. Let us know. We certainly have a variety of them. Uh, we can point you in the right direction wherever you are in the country or the world. You know, we, are, we have some listeners internationally. I just figured that out when we That's awesome. I could open a map. I mean, not a lot, but some. So I appreciate you guys who are listening in the yes, United yes, Kingdom do. and in Israel, obviously. Yeah. We have a couple of listeners there. Um but yeah, if you need resources, reach out. We can certainly uh, point you in the right direction. Uh, seek training wherever you are. Um, obviously, we're biased to um, Masada Tactical, but uh, <laughs> but any training is good training. Yes, so any just training is good training. Get some medical training. Get some firearms training. Self defense training. And education is free. The resources are out there. Yep. Educate yourself. Gotta say, YouTube is probably the best university out there nowadays. Yeah, it is. I mean, you probably could get your degree through YouTube, but just about now, that was so. it, right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Steven, as always, it's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Well, until the next time. <laughs> Later. We hope you enjoyed this latest episode. Please, as always, go ahead and like our podcast and subscribe. Please give us a rating, ideally five stars. Uh, 
let us know how you feel, how you think about it, any questions and comments you may have. Check out our YouTube channel as well. If you haven't already, we've been adding content to our YouTube videos. So you may be hearing about it in the podcast, but not necessarily seeing it. So check out the YouTube as well. Like that as well. Subscribe and follow that as well. And our Silver Savage Instagram page is also up. So make sure you follow that as we are about to release some new and exciting merchandise and some other gear and you don't want to miss that and the only way to know about it would be through the instagram page